Welcome to Kingdom Now. I'm John Carmichael, pastor at Evangel North Church, and I am so glad that you have tuned in today. I believe powerful revelation is coming your way today from what we're going to be talking about, and I want to encourage you. Get on the phone, get on your computer, tell people about this, because this is going to be a life-changing word for you. You're watching. I'm going to be sharing today a message called The Word Seed. In fact, this is part of a series that we preached at Evangel North Church that was life-changing revelation to me as well as to many in the congregation. And I believe this is going to be revelation to you. Get your Bibles out, your pen and a piece of paper, because I'm telling you this revelation will change your life. There's something written on your heart. It's the guiding force in your life. And when the storms of life come, the writing comes to the surface. Your story and all of its baggage is written on your heart. But there's another story, and God says that we are to write it on our hearts. The Bible, 66 books with over 30,000 verses. Now that sounds like a pretty tall order. But Jesus' life provides the perfect example of Scripture that is etched on the heart. When Jesus is tempted by Satan in the wilderness, his response is straight out of Deuteronomy. On his way to being crucified, Jesus continues to quote Scripture. And finally, as Jesus surrenders his spirit, he quotes Psalm 22. His father's words were on the front of his mind and on the tip of his tongue at every moment. But Jesus didn't just know the scriptures. He lived the scriptures. They weren't just words on a page to him. They were the foundation upon which he built his life. And God invites us to do the same. But Jesus said something pretty shocking about the scriptures. He confronted a group of religious leaders who were trying to earn eternal life by studying the scriptures and said to them, you're looking in the wrong place. The scriptures all point to one thing, me. For I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So don't think that the scriptures lead to eternal life. They don't. They lead to Jesus, the author of eternal life. And studying them is not about knowing a bunch of nice sayings. It's about knowing a person, Jesus. To know Jesus is to know Scripture. And to know Scripture is to know the heart of the Father. For it contains the very words of God. His words were meant to become a part of you, to course through your veins, to be lived out. Something is written on your heart, and it's either your words or God's. Either your story or God's story. Friends, I think that you and I need to stop and begin to analyze that statement. You, you and I need to stop and look at it and say, Jesus, is that true? Is it true that for me to understand anything else in the Bible, I'm going to have to understand the parable that the Word is seed, that it behaves like seed, that it acts like seed, that it produces like seed, that everything that God wants to do is found like seed. That's what the parable says. And Jesus looked at his disciples that day when they said, Lord, we don't understand. And he said, look, if you don't understand this parable, you're not going to understand anything. That's where most people live. Christians go to church Sunday in, Sunday out. And God bless your hearts, those of you who come midweek service. That's a blessing. And I know that it does produce some great things in your life. But most people live far below what God has offered. Most people live with just accepting life on default settings. Just whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Not realizing that through the seed of the Word of God, we don't just have to take whatever comes to us. We don't just have to take whatever's in our surrounding. We can begin to change the settings. I saw a statement the other day where someone says that people live life 
on default settings not realizing that you can customize your life. You can make choices. And you and I can make choices. But I want to tell you to make the right choice. Customize your life based on the Word of God. Realizing that the Bible can absolutely change the settings of how your life is going. It can change your family. It can change your future. It can change your ministry. It can bring healing to your body. I was talking to my pastor the other day and he was talking about a woman who had cancer and she had gotten down to something like 89 pounds and really she was given up for dead and in her own life she didn't know whether she could even be healed herself and so she just decided that she would take the last few months of her life and spend time in the Word of God reading it and reading it and reading the Word and so she got a particular Bible that was able to help her to even read faster. She was reading the Bible through every 18 days, read the Bible through nearly 20 times in one year. But something powerful happened when she did that. As she began to read the Word, as she began to get this seed into the soil of her life, something began to happen. All of a sudden, when she was given up for dead, she was given up as you're going to die in the next few months, and she had almost resigned herself to that to some level. Healing began to spring forth in her body. What was happening? How did it happen? How did she walk in that? The seed was being implanted as she was reading the Word and getting the Word and attending to the Word and getting it in her eyes, keeping it in her mind. Healing was beginning to be released into her body and now this body began to gain weight. Now this body began to fight that cancer and the doctors were able to look at her and say, you're healed. How do we walk in that revelation? How do we get those types of results on purpose? You get those by understanding what that Bible is, understanding what the Word is. It's seed into our lives. And you know, when you begin to realize that, all of a sudden, the Word ceases to be something that you just endure. You know, a lot of people will look at the Bible and they will, they will say, you know, I have a hard time reading it. I have someone tell me the other day. They said, man, how can I discipline myself to read the Bible? I just, they said, I just can't seem to do it. I said, you need to get a revelation of what it is. You see, if you and I understand that the Bible, God's Word, is the connection point to everything that God wants to do in our lives. It's, it, it, it's the PowerPoint. It's the source. It's, it, it's, it's something that can change everything. Friends, when you and I get that revelation, you won't be able to keep us out of the Word. When I got that revelation, I couldn't keep myself out. To this day, I love the Word of God. The reason, because I know what I'm doing. I know that when I read the Bible, I know that when I read scriptures that I have read many times before, I'm doing something. I am sowing seed that's going to change my life. When I go to church and I hear that preacher preach, maybe it's a message that I've heard a thousand times, but I know what's happening. Seeds are being implanted in the soil of my life. Seeds are coming in that are going to produce a harvest if I will release faith, if I will allow it to do that in my life and you know that's important because what I want to share about the parable of the sower I think is going to be revelation to many of you he began to talk about how in verse 14 that the sower sows the word and I want to just talk to you about that for a moment the word before it's ever going to have effect in our lives is first going to have to be sown meaning I'm going to have to have received it into the soil of my life. I believe that Jesus was referencing the fact that God made man out of the dust of the earth, out of the soil of the ground. And as He made man out of soil, you and I are soil with the Spirit. And He says when you begin to take the Word as a seed and sow it into soil, Sow it into soil of my mind, into my heart. Get it into my ears. Get it before my eyes. That when I take that into me, that I am sowing the Word. Friends, that's why it's so important for you to watch programs like Kingdom Now. For you to read books that 
help you in your Christian walk, for you to listen to CDs, for you to go to church, for you to get your Bible, get your Bible, get your Bible and read that. You're taking that seed and you're sowing it in. But friends, the Bible will have no effect on you at all until it's sown, until you hear it. You've got to hear it and hear it and hear it. And when you're hearing it, you're going to be receiving it saying, yes, I want that in my life. You and I need to change our attitude. Change our attitude. I like to say instead of enduring the Word, we enjoy the Word. Enjoy the Word. Delight in the Word and let it produce. But then he goes on from verses 15 on in the parable and he brings out something that I believe needs to, as a warning to you and I, that as powerful as the word seed is, as powerful as seed is in the ground, that the word will only produce, he gives four soils. Out of the four soils, it only produced in one. That's 25%. That means that 75% of people who heard the word of God it produced nothing. Nothing. Now you and I are familiar with scriptures maybe that where Jesus or God said that my word goes forth out of my mouth, it will accomplish that which I have sent it to do. That is true in a general sense. But it is not true in a specific sense. Meaning the word can come into me, but if I don't know how to receive it, if I don't know how to treat it when it gets in here, it won't produce. It won't do anything. And can you imagine somebody having the anointed, powerful Word of God engrafted inside of them and it produced nothing. In fact, I hear people say things like that to me quite often. They'll say, I know the Scriptures, meaning they've heard them before, they've listened to sermons before, and they're saying it's not producing anything in my life. Well, let me ask you a question. Is the problem the seed or is the problem the soil? Jesus said it was the soil. Jesus said when, when, when produce, when results are not happening in our life, it's not the Word's fault, it's the soil's fault. It was the same seed that was sown in all four soils. The same anointed word, the same powerful word in all four soils, but only one of them, it produced any results. That's like having four people hearing an anointed message, a powerful word into their lives, but based on how they received it, based on what they did with it when it came in, was the result of whether it was going to produce. Someone says, well, if it's God's Word, it'll just happen. If it's what God wants to do, it'll just happen. And friends, I'm going to tell you right now, that is just simply not the case. The Word is powerful. The Word will always produce when given the right environment, when received properly, when nurtured properly. You know, I like to tell the church when we have a guest speaker at the church, and I say it for the guest speaker's benefit, but I pray they also do the same thing for me. Apostle Paul said in the book of Colossians chapter 2, he said, you received me and my word as not being the word of a man, but as being the word of God, which it is. And he said, it's that word that is effective in your life. Let's stop right here. Apostle Paul we believe he was a great man, powerful man, powerful revelation that came out of Apostle Paul. But yet, he was a man just like I am, just like you are. He would stand up, two arms, two legs, look just like us. I don't believe Apostle Paul was walking six inches off the ground. I don't believe that he had a halo of light shining around his head. He was a man just like you and me. But he looked at the Colossian church and he said, although I am a man, when I declared God's word, you didn't receive it like it was the word of a man. You received it like it was the word of God, which it was. You're watching Kingdom Now. 
And I want to encourage you to tell your family, your friends, those of you who you're connected on Facebook or any other social media, tell them about Kingdom Now because I believe it's been a blessing to you. But let's share this with others. We want to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and I need you to help us spread the word. You can also view this program, Kingdom Now, at WBNA21.com. We'll say that one more time, WBNA21.com. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, anywhere around the world that has an internet connection, you can view this. And I believe that as it's been a blessing to you, if you'll share this program with others, it'll be a blessing to them as well. Thank you for watching Kingdom Now. And he said, because the Amplified Bible brings this out for us, he said, because you welcomed that word, you received the word that I preached to you as being a word from God and not from man. He said it was that word that was effective in your life. Friends, it matters how we receive the seed of the word. People come to church and, you know, we come tired sometimes distracted sometimes. Some people come for various reasons, you know, to be seen. Maybe someone's forcing you to come. Maybe you're ashamed if you don't come because of what people might say. There's all types of reasons I hear from people why they come to church. But, you know, if we don't come for the right attitude, I don't care how powerful that man is. I don't care how uh, deep the revelation is. It's not going to be effective in our lives. You, need, you and I need to stop and go, you know what, if this is the Word of God, if the Bible really is what it says it is, and it is, it is the Word, then you and I need to watch how we receive it. We need to honor how we receive it. I remember many years ago I went to Russia and I spent about a month there when just after the, uh, it was opened up for the gospel to go forth and, and uh, I got hooked up with a, a, a ministry and they allowed me to go to Stavropol, Russia. And I was there and I was able to get into the schools and then have youth rallies. And we did that for uh, many, many days, several weeks. And I remember my first crusade there as I would go through the schools throughout the day to tell people about what we were doing. And then that night we would have youth crusades there in Russia. I didn't have a podium. And so I had the Bible in my hand and I wanted to lay it down and they didn't have a, a place for me to put it on so I laid it on the ground beside me as I was standing on the stage. As soon as I did, one of those who were assisting me ran up, picked the Bible up and put it on a chair. And they told me that the Christians there in Russia, especially those who had been treated horribly and, and Christianity had been uh, suppressed for so many years, that they had such a value on the Word of God, even the Bible itself, that by me laying it down, it was disrespectful, which it really was. I just wasn't thinking clearly, wasn't really paying attention to what I was doing. And you and I need to have that type of revelation. I'm not saying that, that you need to worship a book, but what I am saying is this, you and I need to respect and revere the revelation that's in the book. It's about the revelation. It's about you and I listening to the Word of God and taking it in and realizing that it's going to change our lives. And how I receive it, instead of just listening to messages and letting it go through my mind, instead of listening to messages and letting it go through my ears, I'm going to say, no, I'm going to revere this. I'm going to let this change me. I'm going to know that this and release faith that as I hear this Word, I'm never going to be the same again. How many times have you gone to church? listened to a message, received it, thought it was good while it was being preached, and then as soon as you hit the doors of the church, if someone asked you a question, what was the sermon about, you would struggle to be able to tell someone. But what about the next day? What about two days from then? Do you even remember what you heard? Do you even remember what was spoken? Now I want to admit to you, that some of the fault does lie with preachers because I know preachers who don't even value what they do. They just get up there and throw out some word. They don't care about what they're preaching. I know some preachers that don't even pray about their message. 
They just kind of get up there and whatever stream of thought, they're telling the same old stories. They're not studying. They're not trying to get new revelation. They're not seeking the Lord. But you know, the fact of the matter is though, most preachers that I know are doing that. They are studying. They are seeking God. Most pastors, your pastor is most likely on their face before God, crying out for wisdom and revelation. Sometimes it's new revelation. Sometimes it's a reminder, something that you've heard before. But you know what? I do need reminders, and I'm sure you do as well. And I've learned to receive that. And I want to tell you what it's done in my life. It's brought healing. It's brought revelation. It's touched my marriage. It's blessed my children. You know, I've taught my children to take the Word of God and to do that. I remember a time when, when uh, we had uh, colds and flus that were going through our house when we were really young in this type of teaching and we were believing God for healing and for a couple of days we couldn't get it and people were getting sicker and sicker in my family and so I remember we uh, through the uh, blessings of the internet we were able to stream in some very anointed preachers who were teaching on healing and as we would go to bed at night all of us struggling with sickness struggling in our family with with illnesses we would go to bed at night just listening to messages on healing, listening to the Word of God on how God wants to heal our bodies. And all of a sudden, as we would go to bed at night listening to these messages, healing began to spring forth. All of a sudden, when everybody else was getting sick, we weren't getting sick. Everybody else around us was getting the cold and getting the flu. We weren't getting the cold. We weren't getting the flu. We weren't ones that were sick like everybody else was sick. What was happening, the Word was producing an effect. Well, what happened to us is that my children, after that season of that, I, I stopped it one night and my kids said, oh, no, 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 Daddy, we want to hear the Word. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm proud to say that even now, I have a 16-year-old, I have a 14-year-old, I have five children. Most of them go to bed at night with their little iPods, streaming in messages, anointed messages, streaming in the Word of God because they know that found within the Word of God is life and they're getting results. I'm seeing them get wisdom. I'm seeing them get revelation. I'm seeing them get results that most Christians never walk in. How? The Word, the seed is producing. They've received it. They understand that the Bible is not just some boring little book. They understand that hearing a message and hearing a sermon is not some, uh, some little thing that they've got to endure. No. There's wisdom. Parents, I'm going to tell you right now, you need to share this with your children. You need to sit your children down and say, this book right here that we're holding in our hand, it can change your life if you'll receive it. Jesus talked about it that way. He said it'll change your life. It'll change my life. But it's going to produce. Let me say this. The Word is not on trial. The Word of God isn't something that is is, uh, is well I've got to test and see if this works we're gonna we're gonna try this I'm gonna try this healing business I'm gonna try this prosperity business I'm gonna try this peace business whatever doctrine you want to hear no the word is not on trial the Bible says in the book of Psalms that the word has been established what is on trial James chapter 1 your faith is the trial of your faith your faith in the Word of God the Bible says in the book of Psalm chapter 105, it talks about Joseph. And it said that the word, met referencing the word that God had spoke to him, it tried him. Now this is important for you to get about the word seed. The word will try you. Meaning that just like natural seed can be planted in the ground and nurtured and you can do everything right with it, it is going to take time to produce a harvest. It's going to take time before it, you're going to walk in the results and that's where people just simply don't understand. They think, well, okay, fine, I'm going to confess a few healing scriptures and if I'm not healed in 15 minutes, it didn't work. Friends, that is not how it works. Thank you for watching Kingdom Now. I pray that revelation was powerful in your life. And I want to give you an opportunity 
to get this entire series called The Word Seed into your faith library. You know every book that we buy, every CD we purchase is an investment into what God is doing into our lives. And I want to give you an opportunity to get this entire series into your faith library. Call the number 502-413-0115, dial extension 2, and our operators will be able to take your information and we will rush this to you. And I believe it's going to be a blessing to you. It was revelation to the church and I think it'll be life changing to you as well. For those of you who can give $25 or more to this, I want to also include with the Word Seed series a Bible program called Power Bible CD. This is where you can put on your computer and it will be a great resource as you are doing your own Bible study. I have scoured the internet. I do many types of searches for what resources for me to study. And I have found this particular CD, this program, to be a great resource. It has with it Greek and Hebrew lexicons where you can hover your mouse over certain words and it will give you the definitions from the original Greek, from the original Hebrew. It will also show you every place in the Bible that word is translated and it really brings out the richness of the translations. But it also includes topical Bibles. You're familiar with Thompson Chain Reference. You're familiar with Knaves Topical Bibles and so many more. It it has all of that in this CD and I want to make it available to you along with the Word Seed series for $25 or more. Call the number on your screen, 502-413-0115 and I believe it's going to be a blessing to you. You can also email us at info, I-N-F-O, at evangelnorth.net, I-N-F-O, at evangelnorth.net and we'll get back to you and rush these products to you. But right now I want to say a word of prayer for you. Father, today I pray for my friends and Father, I thank you that there is power in your word and I loose the revelation, I loose wisdom into our lives that your word seed is going to begin to produce a harvest in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching. We're believing for God's best and God's kingdom now in your life. I'm John Carmichael, pastor at Evangel North Church. We are here in downtown Louisville by the beautiful Ohio River. But I want to encourage you to join us at Evangel North Church. We're located in Clarksville, Indiana, and we have a vision to reach Louisville and Southern Indiana. And I want to encourage you to come to Evangel North Church. We're located at 1732 Thames Drive. Our service times are 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. We also have church Wednesday nights at 7. Encourage you to come out. You can visit us at evangelnorth.net. Evangelnorth.net. Our Evangel North is a place where you can belong. You and your family can come and plug in to all the ministries that God has here. I believe that you will find your purpose at Evangel North Church. We look forward to seeing you.